Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, Freeform and Technical Surfaces Surfacing in Creo 5. Learn about PTC Creo Interactive Surface Design Extension 2, a flexible surfacing tool that combines freeform and technical surfacing in one unified environment. Use a framework to design precise curves and surfaces. Confidently test design ideas while creating highly engineered and manufacturable products. Uh, today's webinar presenter, Cody Waltrout, is an application engineer working with PTC's Virtual Center of Excellence and has been with PTC for two years. It focuses mainly on their PLM and CAD products. Cody receives his undergrad in biomedical engineer at Penn State University. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Novage. Novage is one of the largest online stores for design software. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions for every designer's need. So you should visit us at novage.com where you can find uh, Creo 5 and the entire line of extension. Um, so check us out at novage.com and for more daily software news, promotions. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. And I want to remind everybody that today's broadcast uh, will be recorded and post on YouTube and Vimeo later on in the day. And now without further ado, I'm going to share a Cody screen. Just a second. Take it away, Cody. All right. Uh, can you confirm that uh, you can see my screen? Sure. All right. Perfect. So today we're going to be going over ISDX or Interactive Surface Design Extension for Creo. Uh, a little bit of background on why PTC really decided to develop this extension inside of Creo. Uh, you know, traditionally surfacing can be a difficult task to do, and Often it starts with concept designs that don't necessarily happen inside of engineering or at least not inside of engineering tools. It can be, you know, a piece of artwork, a picture, uh, just an idea. And then, you know, going further from that, then you start to get some uh, designs, but they can be made outside of the tool, outside of, you know, a CAD modeling tool. It can be made in something that's a little bit more artistic. And so it can be hard to translate that information then into a CAD tool uh, based off of those artistic renderings. Uh, but realistically, cosmetics matter. You know, whenever you're trying to differentiate a product, it's important to make sure it looks really good and that the customer is going to like the way that that design is for the outside. And so that's why PTC decided to add the interactive surface design extension to Creo to help kind of address that gap and help uh, with those designs for surfacing. So it has an intuitive and flexible surfacing tool. So it's, you know, uh, pretty straightforward to use. Uh, similar Creo user interface to, uh, you know, some of the other things that you might be working on inside of Creo. And it's got, you know, the ability to give you uh, very strict rules if you want to do things like, you know, set something uh, curve norm normal to a plane or something, as well as to be a little bit more free form and flexible with it to fit your needs. Uh, so, as I was just saying, you know, it helps to kind of combine those freeform and technical aspects into one environment so that you can get, you know, whatever you need out of that. And using that then, it allows you to quickly develop different variations on design ideas, uh, you know, for cosmetic looks and how you want that to be designed. And then from there, you can figure out, you know, which one of those is going to be the most compelling for your customers and which is going to draw the most attention based off of how it looks. Uh, so it allows you to design precise curves and surfaces uh, so that it can be engineered, you know, highly engineerable, manufacturable products. You obviously don't want, you know, another piece of art, essentially. You don't want to get a surface design out of this and then not be able to use it. And with that, uh, you know, you can go ahead and explore design variants and utilize some of the direct curve and surfacing edi editing capabilities to be able to just look at some of those ideas see what idea you like the best, what looks the best. And whenever you're doing all that, it allows you to create products that look better. And whenever something looks better, you know, obviously it's going to gain more attention in the market. People are going to like it more. They're going to buy it more. 
And because of some of the utility behind it, it can help you to get to market faster. Again, trying to help you prevent from having to do a lot of rework from the art to kind of final stages there. Uh, so who's this extension really designed for? Well, first off for concept and industrial engineers, as well as just you know, general engineers and designers, anyone who's doing some surfacing design for any product, this could be a useful tool for them. Uh, it's had some updates in Creo 4 into Creo 5 with some of the uh, acceleration connections for the curves. So uh, with Creo 4 and up, it has G3 acceleration connection. Uh, it can also do some closed curve handling. So it gives you the ability to create closed curves as periodic or non-periodic curves. And it's had some drop curve improvements so that you can drop curve normal to a surface or onto a datum plane. So I'll go ahead and jump into the extension so you guys can see what that actually looks like. So for today's demonstration, we're just gonna be working with this razor here that we have. And we're just gonna start with a few parts that we want to use to kind of set us where we wanna be here. So I'm gonna start by just bringing in some image files here. You know, that's kind of where, you know, it often starts with maybe a bitmap, JPEG, you know, whatever it is. And then I'm gonna scale this and rotate it to fit the exact lineup to fit where the, some of those other parts that I'm using as markers are. And then we're gonna bring in the top view here as well. And so you can kind of, again, rotate these, place them on planes, size it back up to how we want it to be. And then I'm gonna use these to kind of get an idea as a guide for how I wanna design. So I'm gonna come into ISDX and then I'm just gonna say, all right, I wanna start making some curves. And I'm just gonna start pretty simple, you know? Uh, I'm just gonna go along and follow the general profile here of uh, the razor. And after I've got a general shape, then from there I can start getting, you know, a little bit more specific on exactly what I wanna do. So I can choose to be, you know, a little more specific. I can choose to say, you know, I want it to be exactly normal to this plane or like this, I can drag it around a little bit. So you can, again, have that freedom between, you know, having control as well as having flexibility with it. Uh, you can also look at the curvature plots there as we just saw, and you can pull off of uh, that curvature plot. You can add the number of degrees you want. And so you can either pull on those points or on the uh, curve itself to kind of you know change the shape for that and how you want that to be laid out. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just do the same type of thing for the bottom. So we've got the top pretty quickly shaped out to our picture. So now I'm just gonna grab some of those points on the bottom here. Uh, you know, line that up, change the angle for the curve at the end. And then once we have that, uh, you know, again, pretty quickly, we can look at the curvature along here and the angularity and decide how we want that to be set up. You can also work in multiple views at once. So if I want to do this side here, it's going to be a little bit harder to do that, you know, from one direction. So now I get these four views here that I can look through and I can design in any of them at, you know, at the same time. So now I can start by just saying, okay, I want to build it to uh, the vertical shape here in the top panel. But then I want to build it to the horizontal curvature in this bottom panel. And I get the ability to see both of those at the same time so that it makes it a little bit easier for me to come in and create these curves off of these 2D images. Lastly, we'll add one more curve here at the back for this piece. And again, we can see between the two top you know, images, we can decide what we wanna do and look at both of those, zoom in on any one of those uh, views individually, uh, choose to add points, choose to be you know, saying, make it uh, you know, exactly normal or perpendicular, whatever we want. And now that we've got some of those up, we could start working. If I ever wanted to come back into here and change it, I always can. So, you know, you're inside of Creo, you can always open that back up, get back into that work. Uh, but now that I've got some of those curves up, I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the images there and start building some surfaces off of this now. So I'm just going to select the curves uh, that I have set up here and then I can, you know, again, pick some of the information about that I want for this surface and then go ahead and generate that. Uh, now, once I've kind of generated this surface here, I'm going to go ahead and put in a, uh, another curve on this plane here. And I'm going to use this as just, uh, you know, kind of a way to control the curve, basically. I'm going to set this here and then use this to build out the other half of the surface and to be able to change the shape there in the middle if I need to. So once we have uh, that one set up, I could you know, start again looking at that curvature, make any changes that I need. Maybe I wanna make another one of these for a little bit further down the body. 
You can just click and drag out another one there and do any, you know, further work again with that that I want to make it, you know, built out exactly the way that I'd like. Uh, now that we've got that set up, we're going to go ahead and start building out some of the other sections of it here. So uh, again, just going to start by selecting uh, some of these curves that I want to be working with to build out the surface here. We'll start with the back half of the bottom that we're going to build out. And just like that, you know, based off of that image that we created, we're going to go ahead and create the bottom half of this surface here. So the last section then is the uh, upfront portion here on the bottom. So same type of idea again, just gonna select some of those curves and then choose exactly how we want that build out and create that last surface. Uh, now, because you are in Creo, obviously you can always thicken this, solidify it, whatever you need to do afterwards. You can do a little bit of uh, you know analysis on this, looking at a reflection pot to look at those curves again. Uh, but this has given you now, you know, a starting point to be able to go and build the rest of this model off of just from, you know, some images that you might have. And of course, being inside of Creo 2, as uh, kind of what I talked to earlier, at once you bring other things in, you maybe decide that, oh, you know, I do want to make some changes to this. Uh, you can always come back in and then make an update to this. And it's just like a part in Creo. So if I say I want to change this angle here, that's fine. I can change that it'll regenerate. And then if I jump back over to, you know, the full model, it's going to push that update downstream there. Um, but that's kind of the idea for uh, ISDX here. Um, I don't know. I'll go ahead and close off here with a few more uh, slides here. Uh, so some value that, you know, ISDX can really bring is that number one, it's easy to use. You can see it's just setting up some images or whatever you have, you know, in some uh, planes using that as a guide to be able to create some curves off of there. You get the ability to look in those four views so that you can see from every angle what that looks like and how you want that curve to be built out. And it allows you to start with something that's simple and then take it to the complex. So, you know, again, starting with some basic 2D images, starting with some basic curves, and then off of those curves, building some surfaces, then modifying those surfaces as you need until you get down to, you know, that final end product. Uh, and with that, you do get those precise curves and surfaces that are highly engineered and manufacturable products with still a little bit of that freedom to choose to click and drag some of those points and edit that kind of shape as you need to. Uh, this also means that, again, you can help to improve, you know, some productiv productivity and efficiency, not having to go back to rework and just having a tool that can help guide you through that process there for the surfacing and allows you to quickly be able to look at different design ideas be able to go back in, change that surface, see what it looks like, you know, a different way, see which idea you like the best and come up with your final concept from that, which is gonna be high quality and aesthetically pleasing to your customers. So that's kind of a high level overview for today on the interactive, or uh, on ISDX. So I don't know if any questions came in throughout uh, the demo. Not yet, not yet. All right, well, if there are no questions, thank you everyone very much for your time today. Uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to put them into uh, the comment section. Thank you so much. Uh, we're still waiting a couple of minutes just to make sure. And uh, I, in the meantime, uh, oh, cost, okay. I can answer the question. Just go to noveg.com and you'll see a list of all the um, PTC uh, packages solution. And if you just need to add the extension, you can just uh, purchase that separately. I want to show you um, the product page that you will see once you look for once you look for PTC Creo. This is the page for the extension, but you, as you can see, there's um, several tabs you can uh, find back and forth. I think as of now, the PTC ISDX is included in packages like uh, Creo Advanced Plus, Premium, and Premium Plus. Uh, otherwise, if you have Design Essential, you can always get it as an add-on. So I want to thank you again, uh, Cody, for today's presentation. And I want to remind everybody to visit Novage.com, where you can find Creo 5 design and all the packages solution and all the Creo extension.
that you can add on for perfect customization. To watch today's webinar, you can go on our um, Vimeo and YouTube channel as early as this afternoon. Thanks again for joining us today. And uh, all done. I think we have uh, another, uh, no, we don't have another question. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, see you in the next webinar. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day.